I know I'm late, but I just got done watching Kanye's Thanksgiving prayer, and man, unfortunately, I relate. But probably not in the way that you're thinking. So let's just go ahead and get right into it so we can go ahead and talk about it. Start the clip. Hello, my name is Jay, and this is my super, 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 super long Thanksgiving prayer. On this Thanksgiving, I'm so thankful for family, my blood family, my fans, and our haters. We love you too. I'm writing this prayer on my way back from taking my mini-me to his first football game. All I think about every day is how I get my family back together and how I heal the pain that I've caused. And already, I relate to him. He starts off with a norm, well, at least a somewhat normal Thanksgiving prayer where he gives thanks to friends and family. But once he starts talking about how much they mean to him, this seems to trigger his memories about what's been ruining his relationship with the ones that he loves the most. Kim Kardashian has filed for divorce. Listen to what he says next. The one thing that all my successes and failures have in common is me. Let's start with A, alcohol. I would drink to take the stress away, to knock the edge off. Drinking affected my health and the health of people around around me because I already had a hair trigger temper and this just heightened it. B, episodes. I went into a manic episode in 2016 and I was placed under heavy medication. Since then, I went on and off the medication which left me susceptible to other episodes which my wife and family and fans have had to endure. Ego. My ego has a tendency to go past the threshold of being motivating and entertaining to just being overbearing. Temper. Now I know none of y'all would ever picture this, but sometimes I scream. <laughs> and that screaming might have helped me tell off everyone who doubted me in music, but that screaming did not help me keep my family together. Religion. Self-righteous Christian behavior. When I got saved, it did not immediately make me a better person. It made me a self-righteous Christian. I was arrogant with my Jesus. So as you just heard, Kanye went from giving thanks to his friends and family to saying how desperate he was to have his family back and then into the main reason that his family fell apart. And that reason is Kanye. Now, though I don't relate to all of the things he says, like alcohol and having manic episodes, I still know what it's like to lose my temper and to yell at my wife. I know what it's like to be so invested into your ego that you start to become too obnoxious for people to want to be around. I know what it's like to have a feeling of self-righteousness where you start acting as if you're better than others in some way simply because you consider yourself to be a moral Christian. And to be honest, I also know what it's like to make people that you care about cry and having your wife feel as though it just isn't going to work out. Unfortunately, I know what it's like to feel like all of these things and even being able to see the damage that you've been causing and still that not be enough to change your ways. You get so locked into seeing things from only your perspective because at some level you're still too self-absorbed and you're still too conditioned to punning yourself first. But one of the things that got me to start seeing things a little bit differently is when I thought about Jesus in the garden before his crucifixion. Before Jesus went to the cross he knew that if he were to go he would suffer unimaginable pain and torture until death. And the more I thought about it, it became clear to me that Jesus didn't feel like going. And that's why he fell on his face and he prayed to the Father by saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. And even with his desires being clear, he still said, but nonetheless, not my will, but thy will be done. It was at that point that I realized that Jesus could have punted himself first and Jesus could have went along with his feelings and just did what he felt like doing. But he chose to punt us first because he loves us. And love means that you'll do what's best for another person, even at your own expense and even if you don't feel like it. This was one of the things that helped pull me out of being so self-absorbed all of the time and so invested into my own feelings and instead finally start putting the feelings and the needs of others above my own. It's because I saw that Jesus loved us enough that he was willing to do the same for me. So with all that being said, I don't know where Kanye's heart is at when it comes to God, only God knows that. But one thing that I do know is that we didn't see this change in him prior to him proclaiming that he found God and he's now a Christian. Prior to then, all we saw was self-absorbed Kanye. So it's at least possible that Jesus and his teachings have been helping Kanye to get outside of himself in a similar way to how Jesus and his teachings did for me. But I already know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what about Kanye bringing unbelievers to his Sunday services, including an alleged Satanist like Marilyn Manson? What do I think about that? Well, go ahead and click on this video to hear my thoughts about it, and I'll see you over there. 
But the next time you find yourself always putting your desires above God and others, what are you going to say? What do you mean?